dawn came Oh. We're David and Sarah. At the end of 2021, we packed up our lavish Aussie lives into four suitcases to do a two year working holiday in Canada. The awesome sights and experiences you're about to witness are the result of two people prioritizing fun, adventure, and each other over financial security, career goals, and social ideals. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures. Oh, welcome back everybody to another episode of the David and Sarah Show. No, I don't like David and Sarah Show. Okay guys, intro. if you have a cool intro for us... We're just struggling, stuff. nothing's sticking. Like, nothing's you know, sticking. It's just, it doesn't feel natural. So, help us out, let us know what sounds cool. Yes. We need, a, we need a branded intro, you know? Today's video is basically going to be telling you guys what we've learned, the realities versus the, versus the expectations of RV life. There's a lot. We're gonna learned. try and stay positive and keep a balance, because yeah. there really is a balance, there is, but for sure. sometimes I think we just get go down the rabbit hole of, you know, all the negatives, but yes. we're gonna try and keep it balanced because it really is. It's Even. neck and neck. Pros and cons, yeah. Neck and neck. Let's get into it. Free camping, right? You think, oh, let's get an RV. We'll camp for free. It's just going to be a smooth, you know, smooth sailing. It's so hard to find free camping spots. Especially where we were trying to camp as well, all up through the Rockies and stuff. And I think the most difficult thing about that is that you really have to be in it. Mm -hmm. and like trying to do it for yourself and experiencing it to really learn yeah. that it's not possible. Yeah. Like you can research until the cows come home, but you, like until you're actually trying to get a spot overnight, yeah. that's when you really find out what's what and what's free and what's not, what's possible. And there were times where I was just getting so frustrated because that night we had no, we had to drive, let's, let's just say from Invermere to Golden. And it's like, well, where are we going to stay? That's free. And there's places that are like 20 minutes from Golden that are free, but then there's like no Wi-Fi, no reception. There's just nothing. And it's just like, I can't, we can't live 20 minutes Yeah. from like the city to go back and forth. And that just brings us to our next thing is Wi-Fi. Well, we didn't think about Wi-Fi too much. Part of the difficulty with the whole Wi-Fi thing is that a lot of the time you can't get a good cell phone connection either so yeah. you're just totally off grid yeah you don't have any internet access yeah so we would have to try and stick close to towns and get it at restaurants in different ways like that yeah or just go a couple of days without internet which was fine but when you're like doing social media and youtube and you're trying to upload videos and you're trying to post on instagram and all that kind of stuff it's just not easy you really have to plan it out yeah once again it's just so many things that you're just kind of like in your brain, it's just like all fairyland yeah. until you actually jump into it and start doing it. And yeah. that's when you realize, oh, there's so many different things that you just take for granted and yeah. you don't actually think about it until it's missing. And upside to RV life is we have seen the most incredible sceneries, sunsets, sunrises that we've ever seen in our life. Mm. Like it has been un believable and we will remember it forever yeah there's been so many nice places where we've been able to camp overnight and I think we've said it in another video but if there was a hotel built yeah. where we could park Monty for the night you'd be paying thousands for that thing because it's 100%. just so picturesque so really grateful for that like that it's just got us to so many places where we wouldn't have otherwise got to and it's allowed us to stay over at those places as well yeah another good thing about it is that you've always got like everything with you all the time so you've got your toilet on long drives you've got your food you've got you're never forgetting anything you never have to think about what should I pack it's just like everything's always with you and that's come in so handy so many times it's oh like, yeah oh I forgot the oh no I didn't it's right here yeah exactly and it saved us a lot of money on food because we know we knew that we always had food in our fridge, so if we're editing at McDonald's or something, we're like, nah, it's better just to mm. go into the RV, eat yeah. lunch, come back. So it did say, was, what are you thinking? We're so embarrassing. We'll literally go into McDonald's, yeah. pull out our stuff, use the Wi Fi and everything, and then go back to the van, make lunch one at a time, and come back. 
David used to buy coffee, so we just support. We patronise them, alright? <laughs> Not everyone's made of money. <laughs> One thing I didn't like is the saving water part. Like we had to really try and save water with showers, with washing dishes. Washing dishes was an absolute nightmare because you have like a little bit of water to wash dishes tiny with. bit of water and a tiny sink tiny sink and then having a shower you like have to open soap up close and then like open when you want to rinse and then close and like you just always try to save water and sometimes it's cold mm. and so you close the tap and you're like cold and it's just it was painful for me yeah. especially it was not ideal by any stretch of the imagination you also have to be sort of close around a dump station as well all yeah. the time. Not close, but you have to, if you're free camping, then you have to kind of plan around when you're going to need to use the service station next as well. And that just adds an extra level of complexity to everything. All this stuff can really be avoided if you're willing to pay for campsites. Exactly. Like most of these issues can be avoided because you've got showers there, you've got probably Wi-Fi at a lot of them. Yeah. You've got free dump station access. Water. Water, everything. Hook yeah. Ups. But yeah, we're trying to do it on a budget. So this is like our experience on a budget. Dumping and servicing the RV, it was not a big deal. It was definitely not the worst part of RV life. Yeah, I feel like there were other things like Monty playing up yeah. here and there and all that kind of stuff. I think it's like the unknowns that hit you in the face a little bit and you're like, oh no, I didn't think about this. I loved how we were not tied down to one location. That was so good because we could just be like, like one time we did the Golden Triangle and then I think we got to Golden and then we got back to Lake Louise and we were meant to shoot straight up to Jasper. And David was like, maybe we should just go back to Kananaskis because there was a free place there. Um, maybe we should just go back to Kananaskis and edit for like a week and then we'll go back to Jasper. And I was like, yeah, why not? Like we can yeah, do that. So, so we good. went back, recovered because we did this whole like the golden triangle and after a week we went to Jasper and I yeah. was like, yeah. It's nice and flexible. If you want to stay longer, you can stay longer. If you want to yeah. pack up and go, you can do that too. It's just really good. And it's also, you end up at a lot of different places where you're kind of forced to just disconnect because mm. you're off grid and whatever and it's just nice getting out into nature knowing you don't have anything to worry about it forced us to play uno yeah just and like come up with other games and brings like, you back to reality a bit yeah we went on nature walks we did so many different things i cut david's hair oh yeah <laughs> but yeah you just come up with like these different things to keep yourself occupied and it's so much fun. Old school stuff and it Old just school stuff. feels more wholesome. Yeah. So that's one really good thing about it. Yeah. I loved how all of our meals had a scenic view. Every breakfast, lunch and dinner we had incredible scenery. Yeah. We would be having our nice big brekkie burgers with like <laughs> oh, nice man. blue flowing river. Gone of those days. Gone of the days. <laughs> The brekkie bagel will return when we've dropped a few kilos. Yeah, so we'll, drop a few kilos. we'll have we'll have them a little bit more in moderation, and that should yeah. be fine. Yeah, I think hash browns became a part of our regular. It was like milk, bread, and hash browns, and that's probably not the best thing. I Excuse never me. ever have ever had that many hash browns in my life. David's more of a breakfasty kind of person, and I breakfast just is my favorite. Fall in with him. Yeah, I feel like you have to expect things to go wrong. Especially when you have an old RV. Yeah. Like, our speedometer stopped working, the car was jerking. You guys know the stories. One story you don't know. <laughs> One time, I don't know what we were like. Like, I was not happy with David. David wasn't happy with me, with me and we are driving. We were like, sitting in the car, and we just hear this bang at the back. Like, we're driving, right? Yeah. We're, driving. we're driving. We're going slow. We've just go, gone over, like, the cattle grid. Yeah. To get out of where we were. And then we hear this bang and I don't even look back. Now, usually when there's a bang and you're driving, you look back because you don't know what's falling at the back of the RV. I didn't look back. I was thinking I'm not going to look back. He can look back. I'm so annoyed right now. And I was like, I'm not going to look back. She can look back. <laughs> I'm so annoyed right now. And then we heard another bang. Yeah, like a much bigger like a bang. Like a much bigger bang. And then we looked. <laughs> Door came off. Yeah, it like 
<laughs> the first bang must have been it like swinging open, and then the second bang must have been it like swinging off. Yeah. It was like it was on the floor. All of our floor. fridge stuff was just everywhere. <laughs> the fridge door hinge like smashed off, and we had to end up like gluing it all back together. Oh and man. Yeah, it was just a nightmare. It was a nightmare. So we probably should have just snapped out of it and yeah, we should have. Yes, yeah, we should have. So we learned a we learned a nice little lesson there. Another little story, quickly, is we went, uh, oh, it was the day when we did that crazy 17 km hike and we weren't meant to do it. Guys, it felt like a washing machine going down the road to get to that hike. And we were like half an hour on that gravel road. Mm. That road was so bumpy, everything in Monty was shaking so much that our blinds broke. Yeah, I don't think that it thing had so any bad. suspension, so that's one thing to keep in mind, is accessibility to everywhere that you want to get to. Yeah. Can and you get there? Like, most places we were able to get to, mm. but there were probably maybe a handful of places where we probably couldn't get. A good thing is that like our RV would usually, like it would stay pretty clean because we mm. lived in such a small space that it forced you to clean every day which was good yeah and you also have to pack everything up and put it in its spot yes. before you drive anywhere so it kind of forces you to keep it all yeah ready. and it forces you to live a minimalistic life because like when we were you know in Banff town or whatever towns we were in we couldn't buy anything because mm -hmm. we knew we're gonna eventually have to move out of this van and we're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and we didn't even have space in the van anyway mm. so we couldn't buy anything which was good because then we saved money Exactly. I just want to say one more con is fuel. If you guys want us to, we'll do like another video of like expensive. Yeah. Fuel was like mm. ridiculously expensive. But I think all in all, it's a really, really good experience. It's designed more for holiday use. Yeah, for sure. Not to live in. To live in, it's like this. If it was holiday use, then the pros would really outweigh the cons. Yeah, for I sure. Think. Because it's just like everything's more bearable over a shorter period of time. Yeah. And you just feel like it's like way better. Yeah. All in all, we wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. I had the best time ever. We wouldn't have been able to see not even a quarter of the Rockies without Monty. Mm. And, you know, I know some people are like, oh, you know, like get a van or get something that's a little bit more smaller so you have more, you know, access to whatever. Mm. But Monty really came in handy with having our own bathroom and toilet when we were off grid. Yeah. And we were off grid a lot. Just being able to cook indoors and do everything Go indoors. to the bathroom. Yeah. Have a shower. It's so good. It was so good. You know, we saw a few people with their tents when we were off grid, and I'm thinking, how are they going to the bathroom? Like, <laughs> they're digging a hole. Yeah, and like, it's just not for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not for me. So, I I think we did. I think that was a a good decision getting mm -hmm. the RV for sure. Yeah, our next uh, livable vehicle. What? Isn't it a an <laughs> So if you want to see us in that, you're going to have to subscribe and probably buy us a billion coffees because it's worth $650,000. <laughs> I learned that like, like I'm happy to be with David 24-7 every single day, even though he annoys me sometimes. I still want to be with him. We, <laughs> annoy, him. Him. we annoy each other so much that we don't care if the fridge door breaks and falls <laughs> off, but we exactly. still want to be together. Yeah, like I still, like one time I, I think we were both annoyed each, at each other and then I, you know, I was like, it's fine, like I need to get over it. And I went to the cafe to get David a coffee, but he didn't know that I went to the cafe to get him a coffee to just like say sorry and get over it. And so I see him coming into the cafe and I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> because I was still kind of annoyed, even though I was getting him a coffee. And then he was like, I, I just didn't know where you were. And he, did what he are you say I, I think, no, I'm laughing. No, she's laughing. I thought, I think you said to me, you were like, I missed you. <laughs> and it was like two seconds. You were like, I missed you. And I was like, well, I'm just getting you a coffee. <laughs> so, uh... like. I, Works wonders for your relationship as well. It does because you go through so many emotional roller coasters, even buying the RV, selling the RV. Oh, yeah. That was just like hectic in itself. Mayhem. But most of the time when things went wrong, we, we laughed about it. Yeah. And we just couldn't believe that this was happening to us <laughs> again. 
Um, Most of the time. Yeah, I think you learn more about your spouse as well if you are doing it, you know, and you're a couple, if you're doing it solo. Hat off to you, I admire you because I would not have been able to do anything without David. Another thing I learned is that, because I, I like I like to like organize and like control stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I had to let go. Like I, I had to learn to let go and just take it one day at a time. And it's good to have some sort of control or like be an organizer, but sometimes you just have to let go. Yeah. You just have go to let go flow. and you have to go with the flow. And David is so good at going with the flow and he's really taught me. I to think just I'm probably too go. good at going with the flow and Sarah's probably a little bit the opposite. I'm like an organizer. So we balance each other out. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, so, so what do we need to do? Like, what, let's find a solution. And David's just like, oh, it's fine, like, well, fine. I'll call, I'll call the shop and see if they have a part for Monty, and I'm like, but, but we need to leave tomorrow, like, <laughs> well, what do you mean? But it always worked out, and so I needed to just kind of, you know, sure. show out, yeah, I learned that about myself, I need to calm down. What about you? No, I think I've learned that about you as well, so that's been good. I already knew that Sarah was a really good planner, but... She really, really planned a good trip for us with that <laughs> RV. Like we just, I know we just hit all the highlights and I'm really happy with what we got to see. And it's all because Sarah knows how to research and she does a really good job, so. Thank you. And she's very resourceful as well. Like if you put her in a van with just a few things, she'll still figure everything out. I'll cook you a curry. So yeah, guys, those are the things that we learned about van life. Those are some of the highs, the lows. Overall, it was one of the best experiences of our life. I yep. wouldn't change a thing. Wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, it worked out so well with the way we had to leave our jobs and everything. Yeah. It kind of forced us into this season of our lives and we're not sorry about it. It's just worked out so good. Yeah, Canada is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The wildlife mountains, everything. We just, wow. Should we tell them what our favorite national park is before we go? Out of I, all the I, ones I that we saw? I thought about it. We'll have to say it at the same time. Okay. One, two, three. Jasper. Jasper. I was gonna say Jasper National Park. <laughs> we have taken up enough of your time. If you made it this far, don't forget to like, subscribe, share it if you like, leave a comment below. All right guys, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.